sisters welcome back to week 10 we are on week 10 out of 11 we only have one more after this I trust that you had a blessed Thanksgiving and that you spent a lot of time giving thanks and that it is only the beginning of a new um, desire in your life to give thanks much more often so Let's begin right away and shut the door. Are you ready? Pray with me. Lord, I have shut the door. Speak now the word which in the din and throng could not be heard. Hush now my inner heart. Whisper thy will while I have come apart, while all is still. Lord, I have shut the door. Here do I bow. Speak, for my soul a tent turns to thee now. Rebuke thou what is vain. Counsel my soul. Thy holy will reveal. My will control. In this blessed quietness, clamoring cease. Here in thy presence dwells infinite peace. Yonder the strife and cry. Yonder the sin. Lord, I have shut the door, thou art within. Lord, I have shut the door, strengthen my heart. Yonder awaits the task, I share a part. Only through grace bestowed may I be true. Here, while alone with thee, my strength renew. Lord, we ask you for this, for your presence, for your spirit, for you to be our teacher. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, how was your last week? Are some of these verses sinking in and becoming yours? There is nothing like it. Nothing like it at all. Well, and I hope too that this song you have also memorized. How firm a foundation. Let's sing together.
Okay, now comes our time of reciting our verses. Read them if you need to, but I hope you can recite them. Here we go. Are you ready? Now, I haven't reviewed a lot today, yesterday, so we'll see. But keep going if I stop. Here we go. Benediction, Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in peace. Wrong. <laughs> that you may abound in hope. <laughs> Psalm 16, 11. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hebrews 10, 19-23 Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. Let us hold firmly to the hope we profess. Sorry. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Let's do it again. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Yes. James 4, 8 through 10. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched, and mourn, and weep. Let your mourning, no, let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. Sorry. One more time. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Number four, Isaiah 51, three. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Okay, our mental health verse. The whole passage, Philippians 4, 6 through 8, is a great passage for mental health, praying about everything with thanksgiving, and hear what the things that our mind should dwell on, that we should always go home to, these thoughts. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Zephaniah 3.17 The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with loud First Peter 2, 9 and 10. 
but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. 1 Peter 1.8 Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. One more time. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Psalm 100. Now, this is a long one. I hope that um, you are loving it. I used it today as I was driving home from somewhere, and I started saying this verse. And it is a great psalm to praise God with, isn't it? It's wonderful. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. No, start again. Sorry, I'm leading you wrong this week. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. And come before Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. Mm. I love that. Okay, now it is time for our meditation time. Well, ladies, the new verse that we have this week, the well-known verse in Habakkuk, the last part of um, Habakkuk 3, 18 and 19. The title is, Yet I Will Rejoice. Now, the topic this week is, this is when the fight is the toughest. When everything around us is bad, when it's wrong, when we are hurting, when we are suffering, when we don't see God working, we do not get an answer to prayer. This is when the fight is the toughest. But we have the Spirit of God in us to enable us to do this. So, the new verse, Habakkuk 3, 18 and 19. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. Now, the first part of the verse and that we, I did not put on the memory card, and I debated, I, but I went with the last two. Um, maybe you will want to memorize verse 17 as well. It's this. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. So I did not put that on the memory card. Um, 
but again, maybe you want to. Um, so, but think of this in an agricultural economy when the crops and the herds fail. Now we in America, most of us, those who, of us who are not farmers, it's hard for us. We just go to the grocery store and buy the cut up meat all packaged up and you forget that you're actually eating cow or a bird or whatever. Um, it's hard for us to understand this. But when the crops fail and the herds fail and you can't go to the grocery store to buy what you need, there's hunger and there's poverty. So this is a horrifying thought for people back in this time in Habakkuk. But Habakkuk's trusting expectation, as said in the study Bible, will not be crushed. Hope and trust transform his fear of the future into the desire to rejoice always in God, his Savior. And, you know, it's interesting. I shouldn't be surprised anymore, but this week has been so tough and it just emotional, all the feelings against rejoicing were there, very strong and persisting. So it was a great week <laughs> to prepare this lesson. And this is what I want to share with you. I made it very personal because it's my fight and it's your fight. But I'm sharing with you about my fight. What do we have, have to rejoice about when we are in the middle of a dark time? When we are in a time of suffering? How can we rejoice? The verse says it. You take joy in the God of your salvation. You don't take joy in the suffering, in the situation, but because you know it is ultimately from God's hand, nothing can happen unless he allows it. Since you know that, then we are to rejoice in who our God is and what we know about him, what he has promised. So these are some of the things that I thought of as I fought this week. I can rejoice right now in the midst of mess and sadness and struggle because our God has said to us, they will be my people and I will be their God. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good to them. And I will inspire them to fear me so that they will never turn away from me. I will rejoice. This is God. I will rejoice in doing them good. And will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and soul. You hear the tenderness of your God? He covenants with you, and we may break our promises and our covenants, our marriage vows. We may break our promises, but God will not. He cannot. So, here are some others that I thought of, and again, I went to the Word of God, which is what we should do. And I'm saying this in first person now because... It was for me, but I figured it'd be for you as well. So how can I rejoice in the midst of suffering? If I am in Christ, if I am a child of God's, then the following is true any moment of any day in any situation. I can rejoice right now because my God says to me, I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your 
God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I can rejoice right now because God has promised to work out everything for my good. Everything. I can rejoice right now because this is temporary. It will pass. No matter what happens, I am completely secure. My future is certain. I'm going to heaven after this life and there will be no suffering there. He will wipe away every tear. How personal. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. I can rejoice right now because my God is alive and well and not even tired. I can rejoice right now because though I am a weak jar of clay, a cracked pot, I have Christ, the treasure of Christ living in me by his Holy Spirit. So I can say, I may be hard pressed on every side, but I am not crushed. I am perplexed. Oh yeah, I am perplexed but I am not in despair. If I am persecuted for my faith, I will not be abandoned. God will be with me. He will see me through it, all the way through to the other side. If I am struck down, I will not be destroyed. That's the truth. I can rejoice right now in this pain because nothing and no one can separate me from the love of Christ. Not trouble, not hardship, not persecution, not famine, not nakedness, not danger, and not sword. Can anything separate me from the love of Christ? No. In all these things, I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus my Lord. I can rejoice right now in this pain because my God is right here with me. I can't see him, but I love him. And even though I don't see him now, I believe in him. And he will fill me. And by faith, I receive the inexpressible and glorious joy that he gives. He will take me through. He is here. He's got me. He's got my back. He goes before me. He goes on either side of me. He goes behind me. He will take me through to the other side of the suffering, whatever it is. He is faithful. So I can rejoice right now because my God keeps his word. Always, always, he keeps his promises, he keeps his covenant, he is faithful. So I can rejoice now. Now we have much to rejoice about, even now, in sickness, in loss, in broken relationships, in consequences of sin, yours or someone else's. Let God lift your chin and open your eyes to show you all the he has for you right now in the middle of whatever you're in. Let him show you the joy in him 
that you can take. Take joy in him. Anytime, every time. So, in our verse this week, take some time as you m and m and do this. Think about the verse 17 part. Though so-and-so, or even if so-and-so. Think through it. Be honest with God. Put it into words and pray it to him. Though this and this and this, and if this never happens, and if this so-and-so, so-and-so, you know what it is. Think about it, write about it, and tell your God about it. Now, before we part for this week, I want us to remember something. We cannot manufacture joy. It is a gift from God. There's things we can do, but we, you and I, cannot make us joyful. Now, all you hear me say today is, if you do this and do that, if you say this and say that, say these words and then you can control your suffering and have joy, then you've missed it. Yes, arm yourself with truth so that you can preach truth to yourself and pray God's word back to him. But I want to end with words from Charles Spurgeon. He struggled greatly from depression he had physical pain from gout, which I hear is extremely painful. Um, and here is part of, a, of something that he wrote. Any man, let's say any woman, can sing during the day. No woman can make a song in the night by herself. She may attempt it, but she will find that a song in the night must be divinely inspired. Let this voice be clear and this body full of help, and I can sing God's praise. Silence my tongue, put me on a bed of suffering, and how will I then chant God's high praises unless he himself provides the song? No, it is not in our power to sing when everything is against us. It was a divine song from Habakkuk that filled the night when he sang, though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the God of my, in, in the Lord, I will take joy in the God of my salvation. So, our prayer is, Lord, tune our hearts to sing your praise, no matter what. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. In believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope and in joy. See you next week. Bye-bye.